This story comes from Thailand. It was brought here by a storyteller named David Holt. It goes like this. Once there was a hunter. He loved to hunt with bow and arrow. So one day he grabbed his quiver of arrows, put it on his shoulder, grabbed his bow, and he went out into the woods to hunt. Well, they went deeper than he'd ever gone before. Oh, I should preface this. That's true. Before I continue that story, you all remember when you were kids, there were these taunts. Well, I remember when I was a kid. Did any of you guys remember those? Well, in this story, you're going to have a part. Your part in the story is going to be sort of a taunt. It's a Thailand taunt. And it goes like this. Na, 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 na. Can you try that? Na, 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 na. Very good. So there's the hunter. He's hunting out. He's been further into the woods than he's ever been before. When all of a sudden he hears a sound he'd never heard before. And it sounds like. Na, 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 na. What is that horrible sound, he says. And he went further into the forest until he came to a special tree. He had never seen this tree before. But there on the top of the tree was a beautiful golden bird. The bird looked down at him and went, na, 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 na. How could such a beautiful bird have such an ugly voice, he said. The bird just looked down at him and went, na, 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 na. Oh, yeah? If that's the case, and he pulled an arrow from his quiver, he strung up his bow, he aimed it as best as he could, and it flew straight towards the bird. But the bird saw it coming, jumped to the side, and the arrow missed. And the bird looked down and said, na, 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 na. Well, he grabbed another arrow, <coughs> strung up his bow, and he let it fly, only this time the bird did not see it coming, and it pierced the bird right through its heart. And the bird fell down through the trees, and he was caught in a sack that the hunter had. And he threw it on his back and started walking back towards his cabin. But as he was walking back towards his cabin, he heard from the sack. <laughs> what is that? He cried. And when he got into his, his, his cabin, he opened it up and he took out the bird and he started plucking out all the feathers. And when he finished pluck, pluck, plucking out all the feathers and put the bird down, he, he, he turned to, to, to wipe off his hands. And behind him he heard, pluck, 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 pluck. No! That can't be true. And he grabbed him a long, sharp knife, and he chopped the bird into a hundred pieces, and he went to the sink to clean off his knife, but as soon as he turned his back behind him, he heard, chop, 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 chop. This is terrible. I, I, I can't stand this, he said, so he got a big pot, filled it with water, put it on the fire until the water was boiling, and he took those hundred pieces, and he poured them right into the pot of boiling water. He went back off his hand. But as soon as he turned his back behind him, he heard, <laughs> No, he said. So he grabbed the pot and he took it outside and, and he got a shovel and he started digging a hole and he dug and he dug and he dug and it was bigger than he was. And when he was finally done, he poured out all the water and he took those hundred pieces, threw them into the ground and he buried it as best he could. He stomped it down and he turned back towards his cabin. Behind him he heard, No, he said, so he had to dig up the hole again. And as he dug up the hole, he found every one of those hundred pieces. He took them and he put them in a big wooden box. And, and, and he sealed the box. He tied it tight with rope. He got a big rock. He put the rock on top of the, the box. And he tied the rock onto it. And he walked it, walked it all the way over to the river. And he threw it as far as he could. And the box had sunk to the bottom, and he listened, and he didn't hear anything. So he turned around, and he walked back home. Well, waves and current work on the box, and as the waves and current work, and they loosened the ropes on that rock, and once the rock was loosened, the box, being wood, floated to the top. He floated down the river for three days, and as you know in most stories, three is important. So three days later, it came ashore, and sure enough, some kids were swimming by the, the side of the river. They said, oh, look, it's a box. Let's find out what's in it. And they went and they grabbed the box and they fought it out. And they opened up the box. And what should come out but a hundred yellow birds 
flying off, all saying, na 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 na. Now the story should end there, but it doesn't, because about a year later, the hunter again was going out in search of things to hunt. He took his quiver, his arrows, and he started walking out in the woods. But he had gone to a certain spot in the woods when all of a sudden he heard, na 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 na. When they got to that tree, and he looked up in that tree, and there he saw a hundred yellow birds. Now, I know there are not a hundred of us here, but we should try to sound like a hundred yellow birds. <laughs> so let's try that. They looked down at him and went, na 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 na. And he stopped, and he thought, and he said, what a fool I've been. I know who you are. You're the freedom bird. And everybody knows you can't kill freedom. You must let freedom be. And the bird smiled and looked down at him and said, Na, 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 na. And that's the story of the freedom bird. Wow.